Hi, Jackie. Hi, Victor. Victor. Hello. Hello, everyone. Great. Hi, Steve. So, yeah, I think I would just start by um, try to getting into the like like brief brief uh, uh, about the topic like how to solve challenges in API testing. So, what kind of challenges or what kind of um, API ch testing challenges in uh, specifically you see in in the landscape right now, Steve? Uh, yeah. Um, so the, I mean, the number one challenge, especially coming from developer point of view, is getting my scripts to my amazing code to pass testing. No, it's the, I think it's that reiterative process of um, continually refining test scripts, um, critiquing, and in particularly as you identify um, sort of issues not only with your code but then also um, building that into a test script. So, like, you can go through that process of checking your code before it hits production. Because the last thing you want to do is have any untested code hit production. You, yeah, I like to live dangerously, but I don't like to live that dangerously. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, also that um, having a really nice refined workflow between you and the test script maintainers, um, having, a, having that really good sort of process in place so that you can do that reiterative process really well. Great. Okay, so Victor, do you, do you have any like a challenges in API testing that you see from your work as well, apart from like develop like what Steve has mentioned, uh, deploying your code to go to, to to production, passing all those kind of uh, automated testing. Um, as I know, uh, today's API uses to uh, API first design. You have the API as a product design. Um, so when you working on your product, working to your team, the first thing you have the the, the great challenge is uh, from your business ideas to transform to the we call a uh, Swagger uh, Open API uh, standard uh, specification or uh, we we we. We stay all of our contract in, into the the document and and and, and implement it in in, in in our source code. Um, the third thing is difficult is uh, we have to work closely with the business team, our implementation team, and our QA team work together to uh, uh, keep continue to refine the the API of and our product. Um, so it is. Uh, it, I think there's a way to make it more efficient to communicate both three parties um, to work on the product. Um, uh, Steve, do you have any suggestion how how we can work with these three teams smooth more smoothly uh, when we are working on our API product? Mm -hmm. Um. No, good question. We um, so we've been running a bunch of when I say we, I mean the local developer advocates lately, <laughs> running some workshops in a um, sort of a workflow way to work through like business process business processing called Cloud Native. Um, so Cloud Native um, not only is infrastructure like OpenShift, et cetera, multi cloud, but then also the other side of that is having that that nice workflow so that you have multiple group touch points that interact with the components they need um, during the, the release cycle or the, you know, the, the release phase. So, and part of this is using the likes of Tekton or Jenkins, et cetera, to be able to test code before it hits production, particularly with APIs. And like, I'm not afraid to say that I've been here before, particularly with SDK generation, where like I've inadvertently deployed some SDKs. This actually wasn't here. This was a previous job I was in. But um, yeah, I've deployed SDKs that, well, it kind of broke a couple of people's production. I mean, I fixed it really, 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 really quick. But um, if I'd had the right test scripts in place, like it would have been able to catch that before it even hit production and had that flow on effect. Because yeah, having end consumers use an app that breaks, like you lose part of their trust and it takes time to get that back. So um, the smallest, tiniest little thing can can have that downstream effect. So, um, the I mean, the other side of that is having those test scripts, robust test scripts in place to be able to be the safety net, stop that from happening. 
Yeah, correct. Yeah, I think as uh, Steve have mentioned about the, the continuous integration and continuous uh, uh, delivery, uh, it's shorten the time uh, when we uh, want to release our product. Um, I think uh, inside of it, uh, all of the, the, the team members have to um, to work with the, the product closely. Um, Objective, do you have anything uh, to talk about? Yeah, great. So uh, I think that that's that's the first step, like uh, setting up the, the testing script in place, setting them in the, at the right place, setting up the Jenkins and all those kind of stuff that we're uh, running. But um, usually when we are talking about API testing, um, it's, back to, it's back to basics. So um, many developers are still in a phase that, uh, or are still in the mindset that uh, the testing codes should be wrote, written at a very, very late stage uh, of development. So do you two have any kind of uh, uh, tips and tricks or any, any kind of experience on where should we start testing in the development life cycle? Should we start right after we have Develop some uh, code, or uh, as Victor has said, once we have the contract, once we have the open API set, then we should start writing the testing scripts. And how 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 would you uh, handle this kind of uh, challenge or uh, like uh, process in, in in API testing? Maybe Steve, you could try to supplement something first. Yeah, I was just pondering a good response to that one too. Um, you know what? I kind of want to bring testing in as early as possible. Even I, well, I guess if I was designing a product, bringing the testing team in to start looking at what sort of scripts and the approach they would take, I'd probably start middle to late stage development just so they're across. Um, how it's supposed to work and even the different um, API product groups or the different components to the API, bringing them in towards the middle at least, you kind of start to understand what the, what the sort of infrastructure is going to look like, what the spec even looks like. Um, and then they can even help define sort of the later iterations just to say, no, 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 if we break it up, we can do it this way to be like easier. That also helps you understand the load that will be on the API from a consumer standpoint. Because if there's certain bits you can break out into different endpoints, for example, you can test those differently and it almost um, decentralizes your testing from one central API endpoint to maybe say a couple smaller ones or maybe some smaller components. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think, Victor? Um, I think um, when we have the contract on, on the hand, we can use some techniques uh, to uh, parallel the, the implementation and the testing. We can use some kind of mocking technique. We can, uh, when we have the spec on hand, we can uh, do the mocking first and let the testing team can 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 adapt in the very early stages. Then they, they when 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 the development of the code implementation in finish, and they can go to uh, the test stage. At, as quick as possible. Uh, more than that, I think uh, even the co uh, from the interval of uh, the contract may be changed too. Because when mm -hmm. you have the test case, you will find some kind of thing is not uh, not not in your plan. Uh, so you have to make the change in the contract. So the iteration is is going uh, from one spin to the other spin. Uh, I think this, this, this continuous process can keep the your project healthy and, and keep your product in good quality. Yeah, great. Mm. Great. I think another, uh, another concerning uh, challenge here is um, how do you... So we, we are trying to... Uh, just now we are trying to look, it, look, look at API testing from a development perspective or developer's perspective to keep it up and running, keep it healthy, uh, wouldn't break client's code. Uh, but another aspect in, in the business world is that uh, how do we convince, like, for example, our business departments or the business uh, uh, guy to, to trust us that uh, we have to take some time to do just the API testing 
without doing any active de development. So do, do you have any experience on that? Like uh, maybe somebody is judging, oh, why do you have to write all these automation tests? That takes months to complete and then takes months to set up and then you have to uh, additionally add machines, add servers to run those automation tests. So what do you think of that? Who's going? Who's going first? <laughs> you go first. <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't mind if you want to go first, Victor. Um, so, um, well, if I look at like the cloud native stuff we've been doing lately, like the cloud native workshop um, testing, mm -hmm. and is is part of the part of the infrastructure. So, it's basically deployed inside OpenShift. Like we can we can have scripts automatically test on near production environments. I mean, you can never have them 100%, but at least near production so that you're replicating what it's gonna look like in prime time. Um, mm -hmm. Bringing, I mean, the debate I would have with anyone inside the business that said, no, 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 we don't have time to do that. It's like, do you have time for things to break? <laughs> I think it's um, almost, almost like a, um, yeah, I would probably uh, debate that heavily in anyone's meeting to make sure that those test scripts are put in place because mm. there is no other safety nets. And the downside will be that you break experiences, you break consumer endpoints, like, and no one wants that. So um, what do you think, Victor? I think that's the... If you did not test enough in, in, in your uh, QA process, there will be the pain uh, after you have released your software. Because every time you, you, you get software, uh, unfortunately, it's, it should be have a bug inside that. Every single project has this. Um, so when you do the bug fix, if you do not have enough test case to support it, you don't know which part you will play when you have the mm -hmm. next release. Uh, so, um, and that is also the, the, the spirit of talk before is the continuous integration. This is the step you have to go through to build your production release. Um, I think um, this is the part of it. You, you can't skip it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's a very strong reason. Just say it like it's part of the development process. We have to have that to to ensure everything is up and running, or else we can't certify that it's it's deployed. Yeah. So so another thing, I, to, yeah yeah to to I think to investigate is about the agile development side. So, um, what what are the like uh, um, development approaches that we could take to try to adopt API testing to uh, more like run to like uh, be part of the spring process, for example. So, uh, do we also like uh, break break down feature into a small list and then try to uh, include API test cases in small chunks so that we could uh, have it more easily or or uh, similar approaches? Do you guys have any uh, comments or views on that? Yeah, mate. Did you go first this time? <laughs> 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 I don't mind if you don't. Uh, you first. <laughs> I need some time. <laughs> I, um, so, no, I'm a big fan of componentizing builds. So regardless of what it is, like having smaller multiple components as part of a project is um, yeah. easier to... Um, you know what, in the long run, I'm not going to be paying as much tech debt. <laughs> and you incur tech debt no matter what. But in a smaller componentized world, if I need to take a bit of that out and then put a new chunk in or add a new thing on or add new functionality in, I see testing no different. Like if I have smaller components that I can test, I can find the fail points easier. You can still find it in bigger processes, but you're like pulling pulling apart bigger a bigger process to find it or to fix it or to add to it. Like in the long run, the smaller components are definitely going to have um, easier to manage tech debt. Mm. Mm. Great. And Steve, can you share about, um, from my experience, uh, I, I do the most is the uh, HTTP based uh, RESTful APIs. Um, mm. And in our tests, uh, to change, we use the, the, the Postman and the com 
few command point uh Newman to uh put and, and put it in the Jenkins and and when we are going to build a new package we go through all the automation test process. Um mm-hmm. but um when when we when we did, but but the new man and the 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 postman test uh scenario most of the cases is a uh, test the single endpoint but in the real world uh, business cases we will uh do some yep. uh sequence sequence of uh, uh uh calling the endpoint action to do a single task let's say we we are buying a movie ticket we have first to to look into is there there is a free ticket there uh can i book it if uh, you are a, a member of some some kind of things and do to some business logic into that uh, how 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 we can 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 get more easy to 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 do this kind of thing i have heard uh some kind of technique right now is called bdd behavior uh, uh driven developments uh can you do you have some kind of experience to share about this area um, you know, probably one of the um, – I'm a big fan of automating um, as much of my um, developer uh, interactions as possible. So I'm a big fan of generating SDKs automatically. So there's two things I'm going to mention now. One is um, a- API Connect. It's an IBM product that uh, does a couple of really cool things along with not only pushing out developer documentation, but – does some really fun SDK generation for, from a single spec. But as part of that process, you can um, also do testing from the SDK side of things, which like to my mind also then runs through that whole test process of you know authentication, um, hitting those endpoints. As part of the spec, you already know what values you're expecting to get back or what interactions you're expecting to get out or what errors you're expecting to get back. Um, my other favorite project, and I used this uh, when I was um, my last role when I was a developer advocate at Telstra, was um, actually these are still sitting on the Telstra GitHub. So if anyone wants to go take a look, they're on there. But um, Open API Generator is an open source uh, SDK generator. So, and again, like you can build test scripts in as part of your SDK generation. And that in itself then starts to go through that API testing. And at the same time, you're testing the SDKs, <laughs> which I'm a big fan of. Because um, then, yeah, if you particularly if you've got like a developer experience, devs can use that to integrate stuff quicker. So many birds, one seed, as they say. Um, so that not only will test the API, but then also test SDK, and then other people can use the SDK, even if it's only internal. And Jenks, yeah. totally hear you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Just saw the chat. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, great. So, yeah. And so, for example, do you, so uh, I think it's uh, at the, around the end of our, our side, kind of side, fire, fire side chat, as the, uh, <laughs> the uh, real fire over there, very warm. Um, as, as a kind of a wrap up, so, um, apart from like, so I think as uh, Steve, you have mentioned two two main tools like Open API uh, Generator for the SDK to test uh, the API, and also the uh, the API Connect that that product yeah. for for like testing API very efficiently. What are other kinds of open source tools or like lightweight tools that you think API developers could try to dig into to um, to that has good uh, developer experience to really uh, could get their hands dirty really fast uh, when it comes to API testing. What what are the kinds of tools that we could try to look into? Um, those are my two favorites. <laughs> um, open API Generator, um, massive open source community. They've actually got a their core repository and then also each language they support as part of their output. And they're, they're an SDK generator, but again, you can test like both at the same time, test the API and the SDK, um, which is really cool. And they output to like 40 different languages. Um, API Connect, that's a paid IBM product, but it's more of API management. It just automatically will generate dev docs for you from the spec and then also do SDK management as well, along with um, API prototyping. So, um, and then, yeah, again, like you 
two things one at one for the one activity like you test the SDK you also get to test the API as well which is really cool I would recommend starting with Python just based on experience that is the one that always breaks first with any of the languages that you decide to support so okay. hot tip <laughs> um, okay. yeah those those are my two absolute favorites okay Victor do you have any like what kind of tools that you we could allow API developers to get into? real fast. Uh, for the SDK, I don't have much of experience, but uh, for uh, the HTTP API, I, I, I still stick on the Postman and, and that they were fine and great. <laughs> yeah, simple tools. Yeah. Yeah. We're great. Okay, so I think uh, Jenks asked a, a question in in the audience. So, are uh, any smart testing frameworks out there for real production API testing? Uh, um, yeah. We do. Yeah, yeah. No, I was going to say we do have. Um, I've been waiting for this for a number of years as a as a DevOps as a CTO even as a dev, but um, we have um, some new stuff that everyone should take a look at uh, called AI Ops. So this is using um, Watson-based um, artificial intelligence to be able to manage um, not only testing, but also management of you know, logs, management of infrastructure, um, just through code patterns, like through, uh, sorry, through AI patterns yeah. to be able to identify potential issues. Um, once those, those are trained, like you can, it will effectively manage your stack at least, at least for the most part, you're still gonna need to interact with it to, um, sort of refine those patterns, but um, AA ops is pretty cool. Great. Great. We could start looking into AI ops and see how could it could like making API testing faster. Great. So yeah, I think we have one minute left. Uh, Steve, do you have any points to add here? Um, I mean, it goes without saying because we're at an API conference, but API first all the time. <laughs> um, even if you build for you first and then build for other people later, like build, yeah, build API first because down in the long run, like you're going to allow um, partners to integrate so much easier. And yeah, it'll just give you more flexibility. And don't forget to test it. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole point of our session, right? <laughs> test it. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think that's about it for 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 the API testing session here. So I hope you all can get something from it. So if you have any questions, you could try to uh, send a message to Victor or send a message to Steve to ask more about API testing. So yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.